What's up guys, I'm DK and you're watching Pro Wrestling What If, the series where I look at the different what if scenarios as terms of the world that we call professional wrestling. Today we're going to be going through the entire timeline of Wrestlemania, but more specifically the main events. Now if you've been watching our shorts portion of the channel, we've actually been going through every single Wrestlemania main event and determining what would happen if the opposite result occurred. But in this specific long form video you're watching right now, today we're going to be going and checking out every single Wrestlemania up until 39 as of the recording of this video because Wrestlemania 40 has not happened yet and it actually hasn't happened even when this gets released. And we're going to be determining what the main event of every Wrestlemania would be had it not been what it actually was. So my futuristic example of this would be, what would the WrestleMania 40 Night 2 main event be if it wasn't Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Universal Championship? So starting off with WrestleMania 1, the main event was Hulk Hogan and Mr. T versus Roddy Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff in the tag team match. But I think in this case, it would be Andre the Giant versus Big John Studd in the $15,000 Body Slam Challenge. This match realistically was the only match that could scream main event because you have two big men who had never been picked off of their feet before, and there's also the stake of $15,000 on the line. So you have that aura of two big men who had never been lifted up like I mentioned, and let's see who gets lifted up this time and gets slammed on the ground for the first time in their career. So that could have realistically been the main event of Russell. WrestleMania 1. For WrestleMania 2, the main event was King Kong Bundy versus Hulk Hogan in a steel cage match for the WWE Championship, but I think in this case it would be Mr. T versus Rowdy Rowdy Piper in the boxing match. Now something that a lot of people might not actually know is that this WrestleMania actually took place in three different venues. One happened in New York, one happened in Chicago, and then one happened in Los Angeles. And technically speaking, this Mr. T versus Rowdy Rowdy Piper boxing match was the main event of the WrestleMania portion that was held in New York, while the main event for Los Angeles was the steel cage match. So technically speaking, it was the main event for if you were in that specific venue, but if you were to end off the show overall, I would think that it would be the boxing match, considering that even in the real timeline a year prior for the first one, there was celebrity involvement. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. T main evented twice in a row, realistically. For WrestleMania 3, the main event was Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan for the WWE Championship. And this one's an easy one. I think it would have been Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Randy Savage for the Intercontinental Championship. This easily by far as terms to actual in-ring work was the best match on the card. Of course, I was not alive in 1987. I was born in 1996. I did get to watch this match in its full entirety at some point in my life, and this was fantastic. I think this match was kind of the catalyst of the style of wrestling that we actually see today. So without this match, we wouldn't see some of the stuff you would see in today's wrestling. So this definitely would deserve to be the main event had it not been Hogan and Andre. Now for WrestleMania 4, the main event was the tournament finals for the vacant WWE Championship with Randy Savage and Teddy DiBiase. Now, this was a bit of a weird WrestleMania to try to come up with the main event because two things had to occur. Either I had to choose different participants for that main event or only go with the one of two matches that weren't a part of the tournament that took up the whole WrestleMania card. So I went down the route of actually choosing two new participants for the tournament, in which I went with the rematch of Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. I just felt, I don't know why they didn't capitalize on a money-making main event match like this at this time. And especially both of these men did compete in the tournament in the real timeline, but it ended, I believe, in a double TQ that resulted in Ted DiBiase getting a buy into the finals of the tournament. But I feel they also could have avoided this tournament and just had this as the rematch instead of having the match they had a month prior to this event, which resulted in the tournament happening. WrestleMania 5's main event was Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage for the WWE Championship, the Mega Powers imploding, in which the main event I have here is the Hart Foundation versus Greg Valentine and Honky Tonk Man in a tag team match. This was also a weird WrestleMania to try and pick what the main event would be. Even some of the singles matches involved in this card just didn't seem main event worthy. The closest one would have been Ultimate Warrior versus Rick Rude for the Intercontinental Champion, but that resulted in Rick Rude becoming the champion, Rick Rude being a heel, and I think 
around this time, WWE wouldn't have wanted the main event being won by a heel, so I went the safe route on making it as a babyface win to send the crowd home happy, so I chose this tag team match with the Hart Foundation against Greg Valentine and Honky Tonk Man, which I believe wasn't that Rhythm and Blues the tag team name for them. For WrestleMania 6, it was the champion versus champion, winner takes all for the Intercontinental Champion and WWE Championship between Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior, but in this case, it'd be the mixed tag team match between Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire against Macho King Randy Savage and Queen Sherry. Once again, I felt like this was a WrestleMania where there wasn't really that many matches that could scream out the main event, but this was when you have such a hot baby face like Dusty Rhodes, and then you have such a menacing heel like the recently Macho King Randy Savage and Queen Sensational Sherry, especially Dusty and Sapphire went over on this match, so this would have been a great way to send the crowd home happy. For WrestleMania 7, the main event was Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter for the WWE Championship, while I think the main event in this case would be Ultimate Warrior versus Randy Savage in the retirement match. Now, I think originally they wanted to have Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan Part 2 at WrestleMania 7, but they felt that Ultimate Warrior was not drawing as much as Hulk Hogan, so they dropped the title to Sergeant Slaughter, and it was Hogan versus Slaughter. But I remember seeing clips of this match being such a great match anyways, to where because it was a retirement match, and there was stuff at stake and especially the babyface winning that this definitely deserved to be the main event had it not been the WWE title match plus the ending of this match where Miss Elizabeth comes out and she reunites with Macho Man Randy Savage it gave this huge moment to where you could have sent the crowd home happy with the reuniting Miss Elizabeth and Randy Savage in this case. WrestleMania 8 the main event was Hulk Hogan versus Sid Justice in just a regular match but it realistically should have been Randy Savage versus Ric Flair for the WWE Championship and speaking of realistically the main event should have been Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair for the WWE Championship people were clamming for that we thought we were going to get that when you had Ric Flair who was well known as being the biggest wrestling star outside of the WWE against the biggest star of the WWE and Hulk Hogan at that point but realistically thinking about it I think the in-ring style of Randy Savage versus Ric Flair would have been much better than what we would have saw between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Flair. So I'm kind of glad that Randy Savage actually got the match with Ric Flair, but realistically, I'm surprised that this match was not the main event of this show, and it should have been because of how terrible the result was for the main event of Sid Justice versus Hulk Hogan. Now for WrestleMania 9, the main event was Hulk Hogan taking the WWE Championship from Yokozuna, but in this case, it should have been Yokozuna versus Bret Hart for the WWE Championship. The match that already was advertised as as the main event and it should have stayed as the main event. I think it was so pointless to just randomly throw in Hulk Hogan there and take the championship off of Yokozuna. Of course, I know they did this for the sake of adding ticket sales to the upcoming European tour that was happening after that, but I think at this point, people just were not buying Hulk Hogan being on the top of the mountain and hence why he basically left WWE shortly after that European tour and dropping the title to Yokozuna at King of the Ring, but it should have just stayed Yokozuna as champion. It would have meant so much more to have a heel actually be over in the main event of WrestleMania this time around instead of waiting until WrestleMania 2000 for Triple H to be the first to do that. For WrestleMania 10, the main event was Bret Hart versus Yokozuna for the WWE Championship, but in this case, it's gotta be the ladder match for the Undisputed Intercontinental championship between Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels. I almost wanted to put one of my top 10 favorite matches of all time in this being Brett versus Owen, but that realistically had to be the opening match, especially because of how that main event in the real timeline actually ended. So you know that the show stealing match was going to be that ladder match between Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels. WrestleMania 11, the main event was Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow, but it should have been Shawn Michaels versus Diesel for the WWE title. I've actually watched this WrestleMania in its full entirety, and I can definitely say that it's easily in my top five worst WrestleManias that I've ever seen. I think overall the card wasn't all that good and that really the only great match of this card was Shawn Michaels versus Diesel. So I don't know why they didn't make this the main event, especially having babyface Diesel actually going over. Of course, Lawrence Taylor being from the NFL, it draws ratings to the show, but we've seen a lot of celebrity matches that weren't the main event realistically. So they could have easily had the WWE title as the main event of the show. WrestleMania 12, the main event was Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart in the 60 minute Ironman 
MMA match for the WWE Championship, but in this case, it would be Undertaker versus Diesel. Now, this was also a card where a lot of the matches just didn't seem like they were main event worthy. I was actually pretty close on choosing the Hollywood Backlot Brawl with Roddy Piper and Goldust, but in a way, the streak, even though it wasn't acknowledged at this point, could have been a cool way to main event WrestleMania. WrestleMania 13, the main event was Undertaker versus Psycho Sid for the WWE Championship, but it should have been Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin in the submission match. This match by far is easily not only in the top 10, but probably in the top five greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. The way that the match was structured, especially with the double turn at the end of the match was just pure magic between Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin, that any of the matches that came after that were not going to top off that moment, especially having Undertaker versus Psycho Sid as the main event. Cool, Undertaker did win this match and won the WWE Championship, but it would have been a crazy ending to a WrestleMania to see what had transpired in this submission match to have it as the main event. For WrestleMania 14, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Shawn Michaels for the WWE Championship, but if it wasn't this match, it should have been The Undertaker versus Kane. This storyline had been developing since the summer of 1997 when Paul Bear was teasing that he had a secret to tell, in which obviously the secret was Undertaker having a younger brother, which Undertaker thought had passed away, but had actually survived and that he was coming back to exact revenge on The Undertaker, which you've seen that at the first Hell in a Cell match between Undertaker and Shawn Michaels because of storyline's sake that this definitely deserved to be the main event had it not been the WWE Championship match. WrestleMania 15, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock for the WWE Championship. Oh God, choosing a main event was very weird for this and not gonna lie, I actually went with the brawl for all between Butterbean and Bart Gunn. Now you're probably thinking, wow, that's such a stupid main event, but why not go with the Hell in a Cell match with Undertaker and Big Boss Man? And there's actually a huge reason why I didn't go with that match and that's because imagine let's say you are a seven-year-old child watching this Wrestlemania and let's say that was the Wrestlemania main event imagine going to school the next day and telling your classmates that the last visual you've seen of Wrestlemania 15 is seeing Big Boss Man being hung on a noose inside Hell in a Cell. I honestly don't think WWE would have went with that, so the safe bet is to see a legit boxer in Butterbean knock out Bargun in seconds as the main event. Plus, we've seen celebrity involvements as the main event prior, so it would make sense here too. The Wrestlemania 16, or Wrestlemania 2000 in this case, main event was Big Show versus Mick Foley versus The Rock versus Triple H in the Fatal 4-Way match for the WWE Championship with a McMahon in every corner. And there's realistically only one match I felt that could have been the replacement main event, that being the triple threat tag team ladder match for the tag team titles, the Dudleys, the Hardys, and Edge and Christian. This was a match where in a very lackluster WrestleMania, this match was literally the highlight and most people remember this WrestleMania because of this match. For WrestleMania 17, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock for the WWE Championship, but can you guess what could be the WrestleMania 17 main event besides this if you guess tlc2 you are absolutely correct once again after having the ladder match the year prior then the first tlc at SummerSlam 2000 and now the second tlc match here at wrestlemania 17 they were pulling off a clinical of a match and that no one was topping it especially stone cold steve austin and the rock that night so had it not been the wwe title which resulted in austin's heel turn this match should have been the main event realistically. WrestleMania 18, the main event for this was Triple H versus Chris Jericho for the undisputed WWE Championship. But this is one of the top WrestleManias where we can all collectively agree that this should not have been the main event and that the main event should have been The Rock versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan, icon versus icon. The electricity in the crowd in Toronto, Canada was absolutely amazing for this. This was actually the very first time I ever watched professional wrestling was the entirety of WrestleMania 18 live. So I have a lot of nostalgic personal reaction towards this and that this match was absolutely insane. And I feel like the star power between Triple H and Chris Jericho wasn't really all that worthy in my opinion to be the main event, but having two icons of The Rock and Hollywood Hulk Hogan definitely should have been main event worthy and I don't know why they didn't close 
goes off with this as the main event. WrestleMania 19, the main event was Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle for the WWE Championship, but it could have been Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock Part 3. I mean, already the prior two WrestleMania matches that Stone Cold and The Rock had were the main event of WrestleMania, so it definitely would have made sense to have this match as the main event, especially knowing that up until obviously the match with Kevin Owens at WrestleMania 38, that this was Stone Cold Steve Austin's retirement match. And had Stone Cold not walked out on WWE like six months prior and then returned in time for WrestleMania. So maybe it was a little bit of punishment of why this match wasn't the main event of WrestleMania. WrestleMania 20, the main event was Chris Benoit versus Shawn Michaels versus Triple H in a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. But in this case, I'm choosing Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero for the WWE Championship. Then they would actually be able to show footage of the main event of WrestleMania 20. WrestleMania 21, the main event was Batista versus Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship. But I think in this case, it would be John Cena versus JBL for the WWE Championship. I feel this is one of those cases where if one world title wasn't main event in WrestleMania, it should be the other world title. WrestleMania 22's main event was Triple H versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. And in this case, it would be Rey Mysterio, Randy Orton, and Kurt Angle for the World Heavyweight Championship. This is a case where I felt this should have been the main event considering that Rey Mysterio won the 2006 Royal Rumble match and they always say that the winner of the Royal Rumble match should main event WrestleMania. So I think in this case, Rey Mysterio should have main evented and ended off WrestleMania with that huge celebration as he did in the real timeline. WrestleMania 23, the main event was Shawn Michaels versus John Cena for the WWE Championship, which I think in this case, it would be The Undertaker versus Batista for the World Heavyweight Championship. Like I mentioned with WrestleMania 22, Undertaker had won the Royal Rumble in 2006 so I don't know why he didn't main event WrestleMania, even the fact that, of course, he won to extend the streak, but won the World Heavyweight Championship. So I think that definitely makes sense. But of course, John Cena being a main event player, the face of WWE, so he was automatically getting that spot. But still, Undertaker would have been nice to have a main event spot right here. WrestleMania 24, the main event was Undertaker versus Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship. But I think in this case, it would be Ric Flair versus Shawn Michaels in the career-threatening match. I honestly think that this match had huge odds of becoming the main event, but I think they ultimately decided against it to have fans on their feet thinking, is Ric Flair going to retire tonight or is he going to continue his career? Because I feel like fans would think if this was the main event, that this probably was going to be the last match of Ric Flair in his career. But had it not been Undertaker versus Edge, which definitely was a right call because Undertaker should have main evented the year prior, that it definitely should have been the career threatening match with what was at stake in this match. WrestleMania 25, the main event event was Randy Orton versus Triple H for the WWE Championship. But once again, this is a WrestleMania where we could all collectively agree that the main event should have been Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. In what most people will say as the greatest WrestleMania match of all time, putting on one hell of a clinic, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels just working magic in that ring. And that's once again, this was, I believe, the third last match of the card and the other matches happening after this, including the WWE title match, was not going to top off this match. And especially how this match was as terms to Randy Orton versus Triple H. It just didn't deserve to be the main event, realistically. WrestleMania 26, the main event was Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker in the career versus streak match, which deservingly so. But in this case, it probably would have been John Cena versus Batista for the WWE Championship. WWE definitely learned their lesson from the prior year that they should have had Undertaker and Shawn Michaels main event. But if it wasn't them, then most likely they probably would have had the WWE Championship main event, especially John Cena still being the face of the company. They would have had a main event WrestleMania. WrestleMania WrestleMania 27, the main event was John Cena versus The Miz for the WWE Championship, in which I think the main event in this case would be Triple H versus Undertaker in the No Holds Barred match. In a WrestleMania where I can basically agree that this may be the worst WrestleMania that I've ever seen in my entire life. This match was really the only great match of the entire card between Undertaker and Triple H. Especially, it would have been crazy to end off WrestleMania with the ending narrative that they did, where the winner could not stand on his own two feet, while the loser actually could, which ended up setting up for the following year's WrestleMania match between Triple H and The Undertaker. So I think it would have been a really cool way to end off WrestleMania 27, had it been that instead of what we got with John Cena, The Miz, and The Rock. WrestleMania 28, the main event was John Cena versus The Rock in the, at the time, once in a lifetime match. And as much as I would love to put CM Punk and Chris Jericho in this match since it was the semi-main event and CM Punk could finally main event a WrestleMania, I think this match has got to go to Triple H and Undertaker in 
the Hell in a Cell match with Shawn Michaels as special guest referee. This match, for a storyline perspective, is absolutely amazing, especially the stuff they did in the match with like Shawn Michaels, Super King, Undertaker, Pedigree, one, two, kick out, and everyone just absolutely going nuts thinking the streak was going to be over there. One of those top Undertaker matches at Mania where you truly believed at some point that maybe the streak was ending that night. And then especially the ending where all three men are at the ramp there together, basically signaling the end of an era was just Chef's Kiss should have been realistically the main event. WrestleMania 29, the main event was John Cena versus Rock in, I guess now, twice in a lifetime, but this time for the WWE Championship. But had it not been that match, it should have been CM Punk versus Undertaker. Definitely my favorite match of the entire card. I think the buildup to this match was absolutely amazing with taking advantage of the unfortunate passing of Paul Bear and having CM Punk gain heat over that. And especially the stuff they did in the match, like the elbow drop through the table. There's just so much that they did, especially with, I believe, in this case, Undertaker was actually in much healthier shape than CM Punk because I think CM Punk actually was dealing with an injured knee at this time and he actually wouldn't be seen for months after the treat that. So I think this realistically could have been the main event of WrestleMania. WrestleMania 30, the main event, of course, was the triple threat match with Daniel Bryan, Batista, and Randy Orton for the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But in this case, I think it should have been Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker, especially knowing that the streak was going to end that night and with the huge reaction or not really a reaction, more like a reaction of silence that this match gave off because of the shocking moment of the streak ending could have been main event worthy. I think the same reason that I mentioned about the Ric Flair Shawn Michaels match is because people might actually think, oh, because this is the main event, maybe the streak is actually ending tonight. So they didn't want to give off that kind of assumption. So they decided not to have it as the main event. WrestleMania 31, the main event was Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship, which would turn into a triple threat match where Seth Rollins cashes in for the championship. In which I think in this case, it'd be Sting versus Triple H. As weird as it would be, considering that, of course, the right person didn't win this match. I think because of how overbooked this match was with like interference from D-Generation X and then interference from the NWO, that this could have been a main event match considering you kind of had that nostalgic act of like, WWE versus WCW in this case. WrestleMania 32, the main event was Roman Reigns versus Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, but I think the main event in this case should have been the triple threat women's title match with Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte Flair. Out of all the matches throughout that entire night, easily the best match of the night was that triple threat women's match, and especially the moment of retiring the Divas Championship and reinstating the women's title should have been a huge moment enough to where it could have been the main event of WrestleMania. WrestleMania 33, the main event was Roman Reigns versus Undertaker in the No Holds Barred match, but I think in this case, it would have been Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship. The Royal Rumble winner, as terms to Randy Orton, main event WrestleMania against Bray Wyatt. WrestleMania 34, the main event was Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship, but I think in this case, it would be Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Once again, even though the result was a little bit wonky for that specific match, Match, that I think once again the idea of the Royal Rumble winner main eventing WrestleMania definitely makes sense in my mind. WrestleMania 35 the main event was the triple threat women's match the winner takes all for the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championship with Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Ronda Rousey and I think the main event in this case would be Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship and once again like I mentioned with the last two WrestleManias and I've mentioned with previous ones on this list is that Seth Rollins won the men's Royal Rumble match that year in that it definitely would make sense if Seth Rollins would have main evented WrestleMania and probably would have been the case had they not decided for an all women's main event, the first women's main event, which easily was the right call, but if it wasn't that women's main event, it would have been this match. WrestleMania 36 night one, the main event was Undertaker versus AJ Styles in the Boneyard match. And I think they would have put it as Braun Strowman and Goldberg for the Universal Championship. As much as this doesn't deserve to be the main event of WrestleMania, I think ending off WrestleMania with the world title is what WWE most likely would have done. WrestleMania 36 night two, the main event was Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar. But I think in this case, it would be John Cena versus Bray Wyatt in the Firefly Funhouse match. Let's say the night one main event stayed the same where it was that cinematic match. It'd be a safe bet to actually make the other cinematic match 
knowing that there's so much hype towards that to make it that as the main event. WrestleMania 37 night one, the main event was Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship. But had it not been that match, I think it should have been Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus John Morrison in The Miz. I almost went with the WWE Championship match that kicked off the show with Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley, but that just didn't really feel WrestleMania main event worthy in my opinion. It was great for them to actually kick off the show. But once again, I'm adding the element of the celebrity involvement to play into effect as the main event. But knowing now how amazing that match was as terms to Bad Bunny doing that Canadian Destroyer on the outside, this would have been one of those things where people would go into it being like, really, this is the main event? And then walking out being like, yeah, that definitely deserved to be the main event. WrestleMania 37 night two, the main event was Daniel Bryan, Edge, and Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. But I think in this case, it'd be the Raw Women's Championship match between Rhea Ripley and Asuka. This match was pretty great to see, and I think it definitely was a huge contender to be main event. Knowing that Rhea Ripley would win the Raw Women's Championship, it would have been a nice way to close off Mania Night 2 had it not been the Universal title match. WrestleMania 38, night one, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Kevin Owens, in which realistically, I should go the route of Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair because Ronda won the Royal Rumble, but I actually went down like the more personal reaction route, and that would be the Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins match. Already there was a build behind it where Seth Rollins didn't have a match and that McMahon would have a mystery opponent for him, so it added a lot of suspense to not really knowing, but kind of realistically knowing because of dirt sheets, of who Seth Rollins was going to face, but finding out that Cody Rhodes was not only coming back to WWE, but actually bringing the American Nightmare persona that he had been using since originally leaving WWE would have been an amazing thing to see ending off WrestleMania. And now we see Cody Rhodes would main event the next two WrestleManias had it not been Stone Cold versus Kevin Owens that it could have been this match as the main event. WrestleMania 38 night two, the main event was Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns in the winner takes all match for the Universal and WWE Championships, in which in this case, I actually went with Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. One reason, celebrity involvement, but how fun this match ended up turning out, especially seeing Wee Man body slam Sami Zayn and then you have the mouse trap thing. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys would say otherwise in the comments below. Now we're going to the final WrestleMania of this recording. It's WrestleMania 39 which night one's main event was Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Usos for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. But I think it would have been Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair in this case for the SmackDown Women's Championship. One reason, of course, because Rhea Ripley won the 2023 Women's Royal Rumble. So automatically, she should have the right to at least main event one of the WrestleManias. But you couldn't ignore how amazing the story was with the bloodline throughout 2022 going into 2023 that that deserved to be the main event. But how had there been no Bloodline storyline, I think realistically the main event would have been that SmackDown Women's title match. And last but not least, night two of WrestleMania 39, it was Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, in which if it wasn't that match, I think it would have been the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship between Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Gunther. This match was a clinical and would have been a great way to main event the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania for the very first time ever actually scratch that remembering about the champion versus champion match we did get so technically i'm wrong about that but just solely the intercontinental championship at this point and i should mention before this video ends that if you're watching this let's say after wrestlemania 40 or 41 or a couple years after that just comment below on what I would think what would happen for those WrestleManias because I'm not going to repeat this video every single year to add an extra WrestleMania to it. But that's going to be the end of this edition of Pro Wrestling What If. And if you enjoyed this edition, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video to your friends and press the notification bell to notify you of when new episodes come out. And let me know your opinions of what the main events would be had it not been the actual main events of the real timeline for WrestleMania. But thank you for watching and see you guys next week on Pro Wrestling What If.